I'm Chauncey Glover and now on the evening news new details tonight about the intensity of a monster tornado that slammed right into Polk County, killing three people. This right here is a map showing you the path of that big twister and the extent of the damage there in Polk County. Let's begin with ABC 13 Stephen Romo for the latest on the damage. Yeah, out here on the ground, this Texas Acres community, you can see what they're dealing with. These trees uprooted, massive trees left standing on their sides. Meanwhile, right over here, you can see an example in many neighborhoods, homes either damaged or destroyed by those powerful winds. The roar of the tornado, homes splitting in half. For many, it felt like a nightmare. But the devastation was still staring back at own Alaska residents today. Three people killed, more than 30 others hurt. Many of those who weren't physically harmed are suffering in other ways. Nearly 50 homes were destroyed, almost 300 left damaged. My sister in law, uh, which the tree came through at their house and knocked out walls, uh, they heard it coming and they immediately went downstairs. It was really loud and we probably had five seconds to jump in our tub and then um, it sounded like a huge freight train and all you our house was shaking and all you heard was debris flying everywhere. It's it was scary. The Red Cross is providing shelter for nearly 30 people with nowhere else to go. Meanwhile, some neighborhoods have lost power and water. The long road to recovery just beginning in Onalaska. Stephen Romo, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Certainly a long road to recovery there, Steve. Thank you. And we're also learning more about the victims killed in that storm. For that, let's go out to ABC 13's Deborah Wrigley. There's a sense of grief in this community for the three lives lost. Those lost were neighbors. But now you're seeing an effort to help the survivors. People coming together, donating supplies. They'll be cooking meals for those residents throughout the weekend. A small town can come together quickly in times of trouble, and own Alaska needs all the help it can get. Serving food, I'm closing the business down. So uh, we're going to try to get as much food to them and as help as we can. Dozens of homes no more, either carried away in pieces by Wednesday's tornado or damaged beyond repair. These women were home when the twister hit. It was scary. So scary. I can't, it's, it's hard to remember it because it happened so quick. It took three lives just as quickly. Among them, Brooke Ivy. She worked at the state prison nearby. She died in her home along with her boyfriend, Taylor Holbert. They were both loved by their families who are now grieving. The damage shows just how violent a tornado can be. Brandon Nelson and his son saw it from a distance. I didn't really think it was a serious. I, I didn't know that I was hearing a tornado. And then he saw it for what it was, what it did to the town and its people, where his family's lived for the past four generations. Today, his 12-year-old son cutting branches from his family's cabin. And I've never heard my dad talk about anything like this with my grandfather, so I was telling him he might live his whole life and never see a tornado in our area come through here like this again. It's just it's unheard of, you know. This one will never be forgotten by those who call the area home. Deborah Bickley, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. And to much different weather today, let's get a quick check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog. We will be near record highs Friday afternoon, but the evening ahead looks pretty good with temperatures falling through the 70s on our way to morning temperatures, sunrise temperatures in the lower 60s. We are expecting the upper 50s, potentially even north of the I-10 corridor, places like Conroe, Livingston and Liberty. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be pretty toasty. Many getting up to 90 or above. It gets hotter the farther west that you go. The record to beat in Houston is 92, set all the way back in 1894. Hotter elsewhere in the state. How hot try near 100 in San Antonio 102 in Del Rio 104 in Laredo but look in the panhandle Amarillo at 71 that's the next cool front which reaches us Friday night could be a thin band of rain while you sleep and then you wake up Saturday it's sunny again with some drier air blowing this way highs in the 70s across the northern half of the Texas northern half of Texas we should get just above 80 then next week Tuesday into Wednesday is our next opportunity for storms as the tail end of a weather system glides down to the I-10 corridor this is actually another front 
front that should push through on Wednesday, bringing us to another crisp morning by about Thursday of next week. So pretty hot one on Friday, pretty pleasant Saturday, Sunday, sunshine all three of these days. Few clouds come back Monday and then Tuesday into Wednesday, an opportunity for thunderstorms followed by another run of some pleasant weather with sunshine and highs in the 80s. All right, looking good. Well, we just talked to Governor Greg Abbott live a few minutes ago about the pandemic in Texas. He says Texas will reopen, but in phases. He'll also be announcing phase one this Monday. Abbott says the announcement will address what happens after the statewide stay at home order expires on April 30th. He promises the reopening of stores and restaurants will be based on strategies approved by a team of doctors to ensure Texas is still containing the pandemic beginning the process of opening Texas back up for doing business. However, very importantly, it will, it will be based upon strategies that have been looked at and approved at by a team of some of the best doctors in the United States. Now, Abbott says Texas is stocking up on masks and other personal protective equipment. He says the state will be prepared to deal with the possible increase in cases from reopening or a second wave of, of infections in the fall. Well, four days in a row with no new deaths here in Houston. This comes as the city is launching a campaign to encourage everyone to wear masks and comply with the county's new order that takes effect this Monday. But it's not happening without a little bit of controversy. ABC 13's Maya Shea has more. Here in the city of Houston, the argument and the debate isn't so much about whether or not a mask can help slow the spread of the coronavirus. It's more about whether anyone particularly the government, could tell you that you have to wear a mask. The cars lined up and waiting as hundreds of people eagerly accepted free mask and sanitation supplies, while the mayor saying that the city of Houston is not focused on enforcing the mask order with tickets. When you see a police officer, for example, they're not looking to give you a citation. You know, they're looking to give you a mask, a face cover. That's the focus. What do we say to this afternoon, the opposite perspective. Dozens of protesters led by longtime conservative activist Dr. Stephen Holtze gathered outside the offices of County Judge Lena Hildago to rally against the mask order. I'm going to put my confidence in God. Yeah. Holtze and his supporters have sued Harris County, deeming the mask order unconstitutional. Most Houstonians we talk to are somewhere in the middle, knowing that a mask is a good idea in general, if not by order. My own personal opinion is that you should probably have your your own uh, right to choose. I think um, I think that the mask probably probably protects other people more than it's protecting me. So I I figure it can't hurt, but to make it mandatory, I think is a little uh, it's a little bit of overkill. Oh, y'all got several in there. Okay. Mayor Turner trying to focus on the positive, getting Simone Biles, Carlos Correa, and Slim Thug to encourage Houstonians to mask up because it's the right thing to do. I know people are anxious to kind of get back. I understand that. But it's important that we be governed by the science, by the, the professionals, the medical professionals. And it's as much as possible is that we continue to do it together. At least within the city boundaries, if you are caught without a mask, you'll simply be encouraged to wear one or they will actually give you one. The mayor saying again, they do not plan to use tickets as sort of an enforcement tool, definitely more a carrot rather than the stick. Meanwhile, the people who sued the county judge say they are waiting for a hearing, hopefully by Friday. Reporting from downtown Houston, Maya Shea, ABC 13. Eyewitness News. And a Houston paramedic is sharing his story about life on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. He is one of 680,000 immigrants whose jobs could now be threatened. ABC 13's Roxy Bustamante has his story. It's a lot, you know, it's chaotic, it's uh, unorganized. Jesus Contreras describing what is now a typical day at work. It's a basket of emotions. He's a Houston paramedic and just finished another 24 hour shift. With this recent uh, COVID pandemic, it's a little bit different because it's something we haven't seen before here. Jesus is one of 27,000 DACA recipients working in health care and could soon be out of a job and facing deportation if the DACA program is not reinstated. But that's something that we're worried about, scared about because if it is removed, people like myself, uh, whose two-year period ends in October, are possibly
possibly eligible for deportation if we can't reapply for the program. The Supreme Court's decision on whether to end the DACA program is expected by the end of June. We've continued to show that immigrants like myself and other essential workers, we rise to the occasion and we are on the front lines. This week, President Donald Trump signed an executive order to temporarily suspend immigration. He says it's in order to protect American workers. The consequences could be very, very uh, large to all, all types of people from all walks of life. Jeffrey Hoffman, a clinical professor at the University of Houston Law Center, says this order could set the tone for future decisions regarding immigration. The question is, is the president now going to go too far? And that's something that remains to be seen and has to be litigated. Roxy Bustamante, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Roxy, thanks, and thank you for getting caught up on the evening news. Be sure to join us tonight at 10 on ABC 13. Good night. Stay safe.